Welcome to the Prep Pigskin Report Podcast, hosted by Papa Pig himself, Paul Rudy. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Welcome to PPR Podcast number 22. Okay, I think 20, it's 23 personally. I think it's 22. This guy's Bert, I'm Paul, and the man in the middle is a state champion. His name is Gardnera, Marlon Gardnera, the head coach of the Scripps Ranch Falcons. Coach, because I haven't shown proper manners in acknowledging that state champion, let's start with a congratulations, sir. Uh, uh, no, I, I don't think I have to hide my feelings. I want to wait. I, I want to add something to you. You're forgetting state coach of the year also. Well, I was going to get to all that and explain, right, but, I'm just, I'm but just I just want sure. you to know, Marlon, I'm a big fan of yours, and I, I, I enjoy your success, sir, and congratulations to you. I enjoy that you enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we're having too much fun. This is, it's been too good of a time. Uh, wow. That's all I can say still. Wow. Marlon, I don't even know where to start with you. I mean, you've done so much in the last year. I mean, you, you and Coach Gladnick and some other coaches pretty much saved the kids for spring football. Um, you won a state championship. You won CIF. You won Coach of the Year. Um, and a lot of people don't know, I just saw on your Facebook the other day, I didn't know until I looked at it, that you you are the most immune compromised of anybody in San Diego County pretty much and still push for kids so they could have that opportunity to play regardless of your health and risk. Explain so, that, Coach, if you could. Uh, nine years ago, January 3rd, 2013, I woke up not feeling great. That got worse, ended up with pneumonia. I turned septic. Twelve hours later, I was dead. Uh, I don't think I was gone for too long, but they were able to bring me back. Uh, I was in a coma for eight days, crazy for a few more days. A nice long stint. I lost 70 pounds, you know, lose a couple pounds in the hospital bed, but uh, I survived. And, you know, it, 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 it makes you focus. It makes you clear on what's important. And I've spent the time since then and since an organ transplant in 2009 uh, focused on my sons. And by extension of my sons, a football team, and by extension of a football team, my community and the football community and anything else I could do to, to, to make that continue to go the way it should uh, for the kids. Coach, is, is it fair to call that a near-death experience, right? No, it's, it's fair to call that death and return. I'm okay. not saying I'm Jesus. I'm just saying I died and came back. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and it took you longer than three days, so you're still have, you're just, you're not on the record yet. But uh, no. <laughs> Marlon, uh, something like that, do you feel like, I don't know, do you, do you feel like there's somebody saying, hey, you have a purpose that maybe uh, the, Bert and I don't have because we're just two uh, bumbling pundits? Uh, yeah. You know, I happen to be a believer, so I had a purpose before. What it creates is a lot of focus because we all take for granted that we're going to be around for a really right. long time. Uh, and you live each day as if it's non-consequential. It really has no gravity or any particular weight until a special occasion comes up. Well, once you have a, a, a death or near-death situation, every day has gravity, every day has weight, and, and I don't waste them. Uh, I really try not to waste them. Uh, I want to get something out of each one. Uh, and, and, you know, you don't expect 2021. And I'll be honest, let them play and, and that movement and that fight and that struggle, it seems like it was two or three years ago. Oh, does it? Um, so so it, it is as unreal to me that it happened in 2021 as Scripps Ranch of all places winning a football state championship. Um, it's all surreal. None of it really makes sense. Uh, it's really, really hard to believe that was the same year. Yeah. And it I don't want to keep going over it. I'm just so impressed reading about it. Um, how, because, you know, everybody, I mean, you were a baseball guy pretty much. You you coached Pop Warner with your sons, to, you know, to spend time with your sons. Then all of a sudden, you're head coach of a team that was, let's be honest, terrible. Um, and, and then you had the, the vision to put in, you know, you have to have a 3-5 or a 3-7 because that's what lower schools get money for. I mean, you have to have, you have to have the grades. You can't just be good at football and you recognize that. How do you turn it? I mean, how do you manage to turn it around and, and, and just build what you build in that amount of time with, with not really any experience in high school football? Uh, there's a little bit more irony to that. I never, for one day of my life, wanted to be a head football coach. <laughs> my wife and I, we drive by the stadium, uh, and we still look down at the stadium and go, what was I thinking? <laughs> um, just, just, just be real. It was a life-changing event. Uh, I had no desire. I didn't 
plan on taking 60 hours a week and dedicating it to something other than work and my family uh, and, and other endeavors. Um, there was no plan for this. There was a need. Um, I had been in two programs that I thought, you know, taught you more about life than sports are supposed to. The first one was Mission Bay High School playing for Dennis Pugh. God rest his soul. Right. Uh, that man taught me how to be a man. And, and I don't take for granted that I had my father with me until about three or four years ago. And my father was one of my best friends. But one of my best mentors, my best teachers, my best leaders uh, was Dennis Pugh. He was the football and baseball coach at Mission Bay High School. I went to Mission Bay to play baseball. I grew up in Sarah Mesa, a little stint in Tierra Santa. I was supposed to go to Kearney High. And Kearney High was notoriously horrible in baseball in the late 80s and 90s. They were pretty good in football, Darnay Scott in that era. Uh, but, but baseball was my love. So I went to Mission Bay to play baseball and found a second father and a mentor. Uh, and I know what he did for me. I remember him saying to me, my best friend was starting to head down the wrong path. And he said, it's him or me. I mean, he, he said that, him or me. And then he once said, it's your girlfriend or baseball. And he gave me those pivotal discussions about what is important in life and prioritizing. And, and, and that led to, to um, you know, kind of what I do today as a coach. Then I went to Gary Ward at Oklahoma State uh, with a stint with a guy named Mike Sanchez before that. I can't leave out Coach Sanchez. These guys were pivotal in my life. They, they made it clear what was important. And it wasn't the sport I was playing. They just leveraged the sport and said, hey, look, if you want to play for us, these places, this is what you got to do. And if you don't want to do it, don't be here. Uh, so as I drove by the school and kept saying to myself, what was I thinking? It wasn't about football. It wasn't about X's and O's. Uh, everybody knows X's and O's. There's, I mean, you could, coaches are a dime a dozen. Who are we kidding? Uh, it wasn't about that. You combine that with an organ transplant to save my life and then dying in 2013, it was about making a difference. It was about my sons. It was about doing the exact same things I do for my sons for 100 kids. And so far, so good. And as I tell my wife now, hey, babe, I'm state coach of the year. I, clearly, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> when in reality... <laughs> <laughs> when, when in, Clearly. In reality, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. She, believe me, she, she doesn't hear me. When in reality, it was a 6'8 quarterback. It was a line with two tackles, left and right tackles that, you know, they, they might as well have been receivers. Uh, a D line without a kid over 180 pounds, and that 180 pounder was a, was a sophomore. And this is his second or third year of playing football ever in his life. Um, I didn't do that part, guys. I set up a structure that said, this is what people have taught me it takes to be successful. This is what you're going to do to be successful. I've been clear with the administration. If I'm not the right person for this job, if doing it my way isn't the right way, by all means, give me my 60 hours a week back. Let me go. Right. Please, for the love of all things, let me go. Um, but it's work. And it's those basic things. Bert, you said it. Set a standard and mean it. Don't just set a standard. Hmm. mean it if you mean it you will get there and, so it's, and, it, it's more than football lessons it's life lessons you're teaching life lessons you're a life coach right? uh it is only life lessons and they get to play a game of football uh, i've got 16 other coaches chris blevins uh, uh just a, an offensive genius uh john taylor a defensive guru and he didn't have the best defense he's had as a matter of fact he's been coaching for a long time and he could name 10 years where the defenses were better. But the attitude, effort, and heart of his defenders this year, uh, combined with his teaching, his, his ability to, to grasp what's going on and, and relay that to kids, that, that's what it was about for the football part. For my job, uh, teaching young men how to thrive, with or without football, because most of them aren't gonna play beyond this, right. and they're all one play away from being done at all times. So if you're gonna give them something, give them something that lasts a little longer. Uh, and I'm guessing death and an organ transplant to save my life made that far more important than a game. And I, yeah, you mentioned Chris Blevins, and I remember the first game of the year we did you guys against La Jolla, and I remember telling you you should give him a bonus and make sure you don't get rid of him. But I think it was most <laughs> impressive, you know, coaching high school football, and we do so many games. In high school, you usually see the same offense in week one, and if you come back in week 12 of the playoffs, you see the exact same offense exact same plays he added like layers every week it seemed and Jax would pick him up is that just a relationship between those two or it just started to click but you saw a totally different game plan a totally different game in the second La Jolla game than you saw in the first you don't see that too often in high school it started with something that seems so simple the offense is very very simple and you, you use the perfect word 
He added layers to the existing offense week after week. If you mastered something, if you got it down pat, okay, that one's in the book. What can we do to adjust? What can we do to adjust to the next defense? What can we do to adjust to the quality of the defenders that we're going up against? And sometimes what can we do? Because we have a 6'8 quarterback that's capable of doing things that no kid I've ever seen at the high school level uh, has been able to do. Don't get me wrong. I, I watched Tyler Buckner do things that were high school. Right. He just happened to be in high school when he did it. Um, but, you know, for me personally, Jax has some, some abilities that make it possible for an OC like Blevins who gets it to put it out there and everybody to absorb it and to rep it the way it's supposed to be rep and taught. Chris Blevins is an AP history teacher at Mira Mesa, our rival. It's very clear that he's teaching AP football at Scripture Ranch High School. <laughs> Which is great. It is. It is. And, and, and even John Taylor, our DC, he's another teacher at our rival, Mira Mesa High School. I don't know what it's like for those two walking around on campus all day. Uh, but we played uh, an epic battle when you were there, Bert, against La Jolla, 52-51. Mm -hmm. You saw the final score against La Jolla in the championship. It was 42 nothing. Mm -hmm. That's John Taylor doing the same things Chris Blevins did, which is add layers, take what you've got, make it better week after week as a teacher, not just a coach, as a teacher, teaching these boys how to get this part of the job done. And, and I give all the credit to John Taylor, Chris Blevins, and their staffs. And I say their staff because I don't step on toes. I don't dictate anything. Uh, we coach by consensus. And when you've got two guys like that, here's, here's what I do. Here, here's, here's my genius as a head coach. On my whiteboard next to my desk in the football office at Scripps Ranch High School is my to-do list. And I make it as long and arduous as possible. I put up everything that I possibly could ever do in a football season, literally to make sure both Chris Blevins and John Taylor say, I don't want to be a head coach. <laughs> uh, I, do, <laughs> I, do it, I do it week after week. I go over it with them. I tell them the worst parts. I repeat it three or four times a week. Uh, just so they say, yeah, I don't want that job. That, that's dumb. I don't want to do that. Uh, that's that's my that's my contribution to uh, Scripture Ranch High School. Where is dealing with parents on that whiteboard as far as is that, is that, is that, is that high up there? This goes back to, and, and you know, there's a lot of talk about off-campus coaches versus on-campus coaches. And I can tell you the value of an on-campus coach, I would imagine, is tremendous. Keep in mind, we have zero. None of us, not one are on campus. And the only exception to that really is me. Uh, I'm a land developer. I do two or three projects a year. I don't have a nine to five job. I'm available for football just about all the time. I can work out of my football office doing all things for, you know, any, any entity I'm involved in. And I'm involved in a couple of things. But being an off-campus coach, my pension isn't on the line when I look at a parent and tell them the truth. Why isn't my son the running back? Hmm, he's slow. Uh, well, you know, I've seen him run. He was great in Pop Warner. Mm, we're in high school now, and there's other kids. And, and they're looking at me, and I'm looking at them thinking, that's your husband's genes. You picked them, not me. Uh, <laughs> my, kids, my kids can run. I, I don't know why you're mad at me. Um, I, I'm just I'm honest with people. I, I give them the truth, and, and they don't necessarily like it. They don't even have to like it. That isn't my priority. Um, this is obnoxious. But I say this every year, and I said it from the first year when I was the football director in Pop Warner coaching flag all the way through high school. I have two rules when I start a season at the family meeting, the parent meeting. Number one, football's not about you. Uh, the championships, rings, trophies you've ever wanted to, to win, I hope you won them, Mom and Dad, because you're not going to win them through your kid in football. And number two, and this one is more rude, so I enjoy saying it even more, football's not changing for Scripps Ranch. Let's be honest, a lot of the families in Scripps Ranch, and not all, there's some hardworking blue collar people. There's some people who, you know, they, they struggle like everyone else. I, you know, I've been to the mountaintop and I've been broke. I, you know, I've done it all myself. Um, it's not changing for Scripps Ranch. So your desire to go to the, the Swiss Alps uh, in early November for, you know, your son's birthday. Well, when you get back, go watch football in the stands because you're not playing for us. And after the dead period in the summer, uh, your vacation plans are wonderful, but please realize you got the rest of your life to do that. I've got four years to teach oh. your son or daughter the importance of being committed, being dedicated, showing up, uh, being reliable, uh, something to, or someone people can count on. And if we can't count on your kid because of you, then I'm not counting on your kid. And while it's not your kid's fault, I'm still not going to count on your kid. 
Uh, so I'm honest and I'm direct and I'm clear. And, and if you want this, come get it. And if you don't, don't. But don't ask me to change the program. Program's not changing for your kid. And it's not changing for your budget. It's not changing for your wallet. It's not changing for your vacation plans. And when I play football at Scripps Ranch High School, this is how we do it. And, you know, and, and sadly that we've kind of lost that. And you think you being the state coach of the year, um, when the CIF, we would get, or administrators might get a little more back to that. But you're right. The on-campus guys got to deal with that. And they, nine times out of ten, they give in to the parents. Because so, they have to. Yeah, they have to. But, I mean, it, you know, you talk about Dennis Pugh. He's, you know, same, you're the same age as me. You know, if you wanted to wear different socks, you went home. If you, if you wanted to wear different shoes, you went home. I mean, but now it's just, you know, the parents come in, they say, well, I bought these shoes, blah, blah, blah. And it is it's individual over the team, and that's really hurt the sport, I think. Well, here's the details. Here's how you take of what people assume are a bunch of entitled, uh, come on, let's just be honest, entitled white kids. That's what people think of Scripps Ranch. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't wear colored cleats on my team. You wear white or black because this isn't about you. And if you want everybody to look at you, go play tennis. Uh, <laughs> go find another individual sport. Uh, but don't come on this team thinking that the uniform is going to change to your liking. This is who you represent. This is what you wear when you represent it. If you already spent a lot of money and bought a nice pair of cleats and you can't return them, we'll figure out a way to make sure you get white and black. Because uh, that's what we wear here at Scripps Ranch. And I think, personally, those details are how you can take a line with a kid. I think he's about 165 pounds. Nathaniel Barber. Son, I love you, but you're, you, you don't look like you belong on the football field. And he's one of the best, toughest, most resilient, uh, most relentless defensive linemen, defensive ends in high school football. And if he's 5'8", 160, you know, I'm 6'4", uh, you know, 210. That ain't true. I'm not. Uh, I'm waiting for a growth spurt, but I'm not 6'4". Um, and, and that comes from... Uh, we are wearing white and black cleats. And like you said, Bert, Coach Pugh used to say, you wear what I give you or you don't play here. So I came out once with a nylon black belt that I had from Little League. But he gives you leather black belts for your practice uniform. I don't remember how he could see me from the distance I was standing, but he saw that I was wearing a nylon belt. He said, where's your belt? I said, uh, blah, 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 home. I don't know. He said, well, go home and be with it. Because you're not going to be on the history. <laughs> well, he was serious. He was serious. Yeah, I, 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 I got to know him a little bit. I didn't bit. live in the neighborhood. I couldn't even go home. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember Coach Pugh, and uh, he, he was the real deal. He walked it like he talked it. And everybody who knew him, rubbed shoulders with him, respected him. So what, what a great role model to have in your life. You're, you're very fortunate. Can we say what I've been wanting to say? This started at 1020. We're now 18 minutes into this. Boy, time is flying. Uh, uh, it's the Falcons state championship that with all due respect to the other two coaches that we have talked to, why do you think I respect the Falcons state championship most of the three? Are you asking me or am I? I'm asking you. Um, I had no idea, Paul. Well, because they're a public school. Ah, okay. Uh, and, okay. Uh, and it's, uh, I mean, coach, you, you're, you know where I'm going. I all due respect to coach. You know, I, Coach Doyle and Coach Joyner both know that I have nothing but respect for them. But they have certain competitive advantages that you don't. Namely, you play with pretty much the kids in the neighborhood, right? That's absolutely correct. And, and even worse, Sean Doyle lives in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> my, but my point is, is that's why your state championship, regardless of division, means a little bit more in my estimation. Would you like to pick up the conversation from there? Uh, I was at a store, can be printed, Kirsten Berger, she prints all of our swag. I still have to produce swag, these kids expect it all, but our kids look good. They have, you know, shorts and shirts and sweats and everything else you can think of, and you gotta wear the right stuff on the right day, or again, you're gonna get the, the, the pew uh, visit, you know, or, or direction to go home. Um, we get what we have. Our, our kids are local kids. We don't have any buses that come to Scripps Ranch bringing bringing the, the fast kids, bringing the talented kids, bringing the recruits up to Scripps Ranch. We're in San Diego Unified. If you want to come to our school, you have to apply the November before the next school year to get in. It's not one of those situations where, oh, I'm just going to go here this year. It just doesn't work like that. I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm proud of uh, it being homegrown. I was at the KMB printing store yesterday, and a guy came in and said, my kid's the number one eighth grade quarterback in San Diego. Tell me why my kid should come to Scripps Ranch. Uh, sell me. 
I, I literally, I looked at him and said, listen, I don't recruit kids. We build a superior product. If you want some of what we got, come get it. But I'm not asking you to bring your kid to me. And I'm certainly not trying to meet any conditions you might have as his agent in the eighth grade. Um, you know, I'm sorry. I, I never seen your kid play a down of football and I don't care how good he is. What are his grades? Uh, is he ready to, to meet our standards? And the father's looking at me like, mm, that's not how people normally sell me. And I said, again, I, I, we produce a superior product. I'm not selling you on anything. If I never get a recruit from anywhere, so be it. We're still going to win. We're still going to be successful. If we do get recruits, Coach Doyle, I'm coming for you. <laughs> he knows I mean that with all due respect. Yeah. But if I had the same access to football players, uh, that Cathedral, modern day, I don't care. Let's get the charters in there. Helix, Helix. Steel Canyon. Uh, you know, some open boundaries in, in San Marcos where you can choose which school you go to. You know, if if I had, if we had those rules with our staff and our standards, um, you know, we're winning another one, but it's in a different division. Um, and, and we take pride in that. Uh, we win with what is right here. Uh, and because we teach young people how to thrive, it doesn't matter where you come from. So let me ask you, you know, to roll on that. I think you guys just got moved up to Division One, didn't you? You know, I was having a good day. <laughs> so wait, so I'm asking you on. <laughs> no, I'm saying you overcome. That's it. Wait, that's the question. You overcome all this despite everything. You overcome everything that they put in front of you. And then in one year, because you're successful and you do, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It is recognition of the direction this program has gone. It is a higher level of football. We will compete. It's also a slap in the face because I don't get recruits uh, because I have a lineman that's under 200 pounds that we're going to have some matchup problems. Uh, but, you know, uh, I've become an activist uh, and didn't know it. Uh, uh, this is my public announcement. I'm pushing for the Southern Section playoff format in San Diego County, and I won't stop until we get it. Uh, and by that, I mean rank all the teams, one through, I think it's 84 place us in divisions at the end of the year based on what the team that's on the field did this year. Luke Durkin is a great quarterback. He's playing for Davidson, but what he did in 2019 has absolutely nothing to do with what the team in 2022 is going to play. And I'm being penalized, quite frankly, because in 2019, we were 12 and one in CIF runner-ups and we're 13 and one this year. I understand they're not counting the COVID year in between. Uh, our record's 25 and two in those two years. So we belong in division one, but next year's team is going to pay the price for our teams before it. Yeah. that have absolutely nothing to do with them. And quite frankly, when you get to the state playoffs, they do it that way. Where are you ranked? Where you're ranked is what division you go in, and that's how it moves forward. So this idea of the previous years having something to do with the next year is absurd. And I don't mean anything against the people who put it together, but I can just say this. Next year's team ought to decide, based on their play on the field, what division they should be in at the end of next year. Play your regular season, rank the teams, top 20 teams are D1. The next 16, 20 teams are D2, and so on and so on. If you need to add some more divisions, add some more divisions. But don't penalize kids for what their predecessors did. And this you know, this, this helps even the smaller programs where they may be having a great year and they, they, they compete at the level they're at. Uh, and, and a team like Saints last year, who didn't have a chance of winning Division One, you know, at all, they probably should have been able to compete for a Division Two title. And quite frankly, uh, Scripps in modern day should have been competing for a Division One championship last year. Uh, or this recent season. So um, my next mission is to get our division layout based on the current season, not previous seasons. Right. And that's not for me because I think we should have been in Division One last year. Modern day, they won Division One by beating Helix in the playoffs. Are you not allowed to say so, that? I got in trouble for saying that. You're not allowed to say that. <clears throat> let me let me let me do it the way I do it at Scripps Ranch. If 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 I'm not the right person for the job, let me go because here comes the truth. <laughs> Modern day should have been in Division One. They won it. Yeah, they, they did win the it. Division One team. No, I get it. But my point is that that's where I'm going. Um, I'm going to make football better for every team in San Diego County by letting them play in the playoffs that and, reflect and, who they are and where they are. And for the purpose of this conversation, Modern Day is going to be playing in Division Two. Yes, and you're, uh, and you're going to be in one. I saw the list about three minutes before I got on. Modern Day is actually in Division One according to the preliminary list that I saw. Oh, I saw two. I could be wrong. I saw two. I think you're wrong. I saw you in one. <laughs> are you uh, sure? I'm looking at the list again. You are correct. Ah, thank you. I'll you are correct. Accept apologies and gifts okay. after the show. Uh, well done, you. On behalf of the top of so football easy. family, I'd like to apologize to Bert Grossman. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, you're correct. But, and, and the absurdity of that is obvious. Yes, it is. They could, they could, they could probably back. play in the open. Yeah. 
it's a, it's absurd. It, right. and, and, and like I said, whoever created this, there was a reason. I'm not aware of the reason, so I can't downplay it. Other than to say, my 2022 team should determine where they play in the playoffs, not my 2019 and 2021 teams. I agree with that. I couldn't agree with that more. Um, do you got a question? Because we were, we're at 20. Oh, we, how, yeah. how did we go burn through 25 minutes already? Um, go on. I don't. I don't have a question. Well, I, have a, time. I have a couple. Uh, oh wow. I have a couple uh, pol- politic- politics real quick. Is the school board deal now done for you? You don't have a place to run? Uh, if I want to run to represent Scripps Ranch, that has been changed. Uh, I met with the only other uh, announced candidate, and I get the feeling that uh, she knew that, uh, her, that some of these union folks and, and some of the people on the board were going to move Scripps Ranch out of the District B and over to District A, which isn't up for election until 2024. Uh, I haven't completely decided. Uh, I lived in all of the other areas that District B will still represent, so I haven't ruled it out. But I obviously would like to represent my own community, and to do that, it would be 2024. And here's a, here's the problem with that, though, and, and I'm sure you're aware of this. The other seats will all be union-backed, and it'll every vote will be four against one, and nothing will change. Well, how do you know? Uh, uh, how do you know? I, Coach I, I, will I be union-backed. I, I do something they don't do. I'm I'm honest. Um, and, and I don't mind coming straight to KUSI and saying, I sat in a room listening to some nonsense and they're pushing that nonsense. The only thing stronger than the union are people. I want to represent the parents. We're the customers. There are kids. Nobody's better qualified to raise my sons than me. So if you exclude my input, you're going to hear it somewhere else. It may not be in that meeting, but it'll be all over San Diego when, 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 when garbage is happening uh, and, and, and cronies are, are letting it happen. I'm not that guy. Coach, if they had to put party label, uh, I, I've offered to be your campaign manager regardless of your political affiliation. That's how much I respect you. Yeah, because uh, um, people know that this station is a right of center. I'm a right of center journalist, I think. Mm. But if we had to put a party label on Coach Gardnera, what, would you, what letter would you put next to your name, sir? I would put a P. As it relates to the school board, I'm from the parent party. Nice try, Paul. <laughs> so, uh, boy, that's a good nice dodge. Try. That is, that a, is good. a good dodge. He's, he's good. Listen, that's a good dodge. Listen, listen. Um, uh, I had no problem suing the governor at all. I'd do it again tomorrow if I thought there was an issue. Nathan Fletcher, I still got your fourth and whatever you said. I haven't seen him face to face since then, but I'll remind him. Uh, we didn't need your help nor your permission. Uh, don't ever throw yourself out there as king of anything. You're not. Uh, so that certainly, you know, makes me a friend to the KUSI audience. On the other side of that, I've died and, and come back and been without health care. So I understand the importance for people who don't have as much and people in need. And I care as much as anybody else. So I can't turn my back on, on, on I don't want to say anyone. I can't turn my back on anyone. If, if someone's in need of help and it's true help, there's got to be a way to do it. So I would say the, the R and the D are both ridiculous right now. And then I don't know that they're about people as much as they are about power and their parties. And I'm really more about people uh, at the moment. So don't make me do it, Paul. I wasn't dodging. Uh, it's, it's, it's the people. It's, in this case, the kids. It's the parents. Uh, and if I went to the next level and, and, and had to, to run for a higher office, maybe, maybe I'll share then. Well, Coach, either way, uh, my, my offer stands. I, I, I vote the man, not the not the letter next to his name. And you are right, the senator. You you, see, you said the man, not left the women out, left everything right? out. You oh, are right, the senator. See this right here. Right, I vote the candidate. You let said me, the man. Let, let me come ch- on, Paul. All right, sorry, but you know what I'm listen, saying here. Listen, I meant it listen. as. You don't know what I identify as. No, I. I <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, coach. We're, we're I we over. We went way heavy. So just just uh, give me some. Uh, Inspire me right now. You've got uh, you get, the last minute is yours. We're in the huddle. Inspire me to be better tomorrow. Well, before we got to the huddle, I screamed at you for four hours. So <laughs> if by the time you get to the huddle, you already know what to do or you know what's coming. Uh, I'm not a drill sergeant. Uh, I'm a father. I'm a father before I'm a coach. And as a father, I have an obligation and responsibilities to these kids. Uh, when I step on the football field, they just call me coach when I do it. Really, there's no difference between the two. If your goal is to make sure the kids are prepared and ready for, for life, uh, then meet them where they are. And if the football field is where they are, use that to get them where they need to be. Don't relent. Don't give up. Don't accept any excuses. I don't coach parents. They're not my problem. It's too late. Uh, but, you know, they, <laughs> I, I can't help you folks, but I can help your kids if you avail them. 
uh, to, to Scripps Ranch, to our staff, to our school, to the academic excellence we put out there. Uh, so again, I can't sell me, uh, but I can help build you if you're a kid and you play football in San Diego County. Uh, and Paul, you know, you don't need inspiration. Th these kids, you know, they don't understand weight and gravity. One of the things they do understand is, is Prep Pigskin Report. Uh, and they chase that, that camera and they chase that dream and they chase uh, being acknowledged for something that they care so deeply about. Uh, and you, Mr. Rudy, uh, you already know you're the man. Uh, Bert, oh, you know, I don't know where you came from, buddy, but we've grown to love you too. Uh, you, you guys do, you guys are a piece of this puzzle. You guys are a part of making these kids push and push and push. And I always tell the same story. As a football coach, I can make a kid walk over hot coals. They burn their feet. I can tell them to get back in line, do it again, and they're going to do it again. Um, you guys are a part of that. Uh, so while we get a chance to change lives, let's do it. Let's have fun when we do it. Let's keep acknowledging them when they do it well, which you guys do a, a fantastic job of. Uh, I'm just glad to be in the middle uh, between you two. On that note, we will wow. call Coach, we've done now 22 of these or 23. We're not, we're not sure. I'm not sure. But we are sure of this. It's the best one. So, uh, Coach Gardner, uh, congratulations on Coach of the Year. You know, the, uh, we, we learned one thing from the PPR deal is that we, we, we can't pick the Coach of the Year until after the season is over. Correct. Uh, we, we went with the uh, regular season pick. No, and no disparage to Coach. But coach uh, yeah, no, it was coach, a lot this year. Coach Wesley, what he did at, at uh, Mount Carmel. But, we you know, obviously we didn't get to see it all the way through. And so uh, we learned a lesson about going into 2022. Coach, so uh, you know what we're saying. You're loved and respected. And the fact that you gave us 32 minutes of your time means a ton. I won't bother you again until uh, come fall, okay? Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Coach. Thank you, Coach.